Hello everyone, welcome to a short lecture on the uh, basics of building GUIs in Scala. And this will use uh, Scala's standard libraries only. Uh, there are many, many libraries for building GUIs in different languages. It's one of the areas where there is probably some of the least standardization. Uh, but for, for this presentation, we'll focus on things that are available uh, in the standard Scala install. Uh, which can also include aspects of uh, Java. So one thing to note about this is that when you write GUIs you wind up using a fair bit of uh, library code and so it's worth taking a second to look at the Java API or sorry the Scala API and look for where this code is located. Now we're going to be using the scala.swing package and things located under it. Um, Swing is actually a library that's part of Java. There's a javax.swing library and that library is built on top of an older java.awt library that came out with the original version of Java. Um, because of the wrapping, we will very rarely be using the Java Swing libraries. The Scala Swing libraries covers over pretty much everything that that we will need. Um, so you can can and should go into the API and look at the different classes and types that are available to you. Uh, it includes most of the things that you would want to put inside of a GUI. So to help illustrate this we will write a little code. So GUIs for those who aren't aware stands for graphical user interface. That's the programs that you're used to running most of the time where you pop up a window and you click on things and type and whatnot. It's the way that most people today are used to interacting with programs as opposed to the command line which is how we've been doing most things up till this point. So let's go ahead and let's create a program file. Now everything for the swing libraries is inside of scala.swing. So we're going to import that entire package. Um, we'll see later that there might there are some other things that we might need to import, but for now that's enough to to get us by. So in order to have a GUI the first thing we have to do is to pop up a window and the windows are basically come in two flavors frames and dialogues. A uh, frame being a primary window and a dialog being a dialog box that would get uh, popped up. Scala actually includes a specific type of frame just for the purposes of being the main uh, element of a GUI based program and that's called a mainframe and so we are going to declare a variable called frame and set it equal to a new mainframe and at this point we are going to provide kind of a body for the mainframe uh, a place where we can describe things that are part of this frame stuff that kind of goes inside of it and if you look in the API, you'll see that there are quite a few different things that are part of the main frame. There are a few that we want to set to make this so that it acts and looks the way that we want it to. One of the first things is I'd like to give my frame a title. So we'll go with the title My First GUI. Uh, we just set that string into the name title and title is associated with the mainframe it knows about that so that will give our window that we will pop up a um, a title the second thing that we have or the second thing we're going to set is the contents this is what is inside of the frame at least to start with I am just going to create a button and I'll have my button say click me uh, and we'll talk more about how we create buttons and, and other GUI components in just a second um, 
But in the case of a button, it has a special short syntax where we provide it the text that we want to have on the button, followed by a block which is the code that we want executed. Uh, and in this case, I'll just have it print a message saying that the button was clicked. We can also set the size of the frame. And for this, we need to give it an object of type dimension. This is actually coming from java.awt.dimension. Uh, and that specifies how big our window is. We'll go with a 500 by 500. Now, if you just do that, the window winds up popping up in the uh, top left corner of your workspace uh, for various reasons, in large part because of the way this is being recorded. I want this to pop up in the middle of my screen, and so I'm going to call a method called center on screen. Now, again, you can find all of these things inside of the API. We are here inside of the mainframe, and so if you look at mainframe, you will see that there is a contents and there is a method in here. This underscores equals tells you that you can set it to be whatever you want. There is also one of those for size and there is one of those for title as well as there being the method center on screen that you can call. Uh, and as the name implies, it centers things. The last thing that we need to do is that this statement here declares and creates our frame. We need to make it so it pops up. And so we'll set visible.true, or visible, or frame.visible equal to true. Prior to Scala 2.9, we would also need another line that, that keeps things going, either a read line or an infinite loop, uh, because as soon as the main thread terminated in earlier versions of Scala, the window would close. That's not a problem for us here because I'm using Scala 2.9, and most likely so are you. So if we run this program, you can see the GUI that pops up. It is 500 pixels by 500 pixels. It has this button in it that says click me, and when we click it, stuff is printed over here. Okay, so it does exactly what we were going for. So, where can we go from here? Well, we've uh, only talked about the buttons. Uh, there's also, there's, we could put in other components. Uh, there's one other thing that's worth showing you, and that is the fact that the order of those two lines, the size and the contents, winds up being significant. As you can see, if I flip them, I get a much smaller window. The reason for this is because when you set the contents, it actually goes through and changes the size. And it does this by using an operation called pack. And pack throws things into as small of a space as it can. So in this case, when I set the contents to be this button, it made the frame just big enough to hold that one button, which is why I got a much smaller window. Uh, this is worth pointing out because it is something that can cause you problems if you're not aware of it and it gets very frustrating to figure out why it is that you're you told the window to be big and it's not or whatever now instead of a button there are quite a few other components that we could have uh, once again these are available in the uh, in the API you can find these kind of the standard components you would expect are having uh, checkboxes radio buttons a combo box that's a, a drop down box with multiple elements inside of it a list view, which will display a list of things for you. A text field, which is a single line text input, and a text area, uh, which is a multi-line text input. Um, just to demonstrate what happens here, uh, new text area. Sure. And if we run this, well, this is a text area. So we definitely have a text area, but you'll notice that our button has gone missing. Um, turns out that frames can only get to hold one component. And uh, so 
when you add a when we set it to be the text area the button basically got thrown away we'll have a future video where we look at how we can get multiple things inside of our uh, frame um, because this can be a significant limitation we'll get rid of the button leave the text area in there as it will be significant later on there are other types of components that you can put in there uh, such as a, a visual components like a slider that you can slide back and forth or a scroll bar that you can add to the edge of things if you want to manually write your own scrolling code we'll see that there are ways of getting scrolling code in there more automatically there are also more advanced components that you can put in uh, such as an editor pane which is a, a powerful text editor that goes beyond what the text area does uh, and a table which basically acts like a, a little spreadsheet. Um, so that's all we'll look at for this video. Uh, you can spend some time building your own simple GUIs that have one element, play with things, pop them up, see what they do. Uh, and next we'll look at how we can throw in uh, menus to give our frames a little bit more capability and we'll write our first little application.